Yeah, okay, okay, so let's take a few notes. And then I want to get started today. All right, first thing, I want to talk about continuously uh, compounded and compound inverse formulas. Because I said yesterday, I want to talk about a uh, an exponential growth and decay problem today, but I want to talk about how how we've been doing stuff with bank accounts and how this fits. Hopefully that doesn't fall. It's okay. 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 I'm not I'm not responsible though. Okay. All right. Uh, he didn't sign a waiver. So. Okay. All right. Um, so compound interest. So here we go. Uh, this formula, this is the formula I'd like you to have um, if you haven't written this down. We've had this quite a while ago, but I want to discuss. Thanks. All right. <laughs> oh, it's that one. All right, fine. All right, fine. <laughs> okay, this, this formula here, right, continuously compounded. What this is, is you take your principal that you're investing in your bank account, um, or maybe this is a checking account, or uh, I should say a credit oh. card. Uh, and what this number will give you is what the charge will be at the very end. So what I want to talk about is like, let's say you bought a brand new MacBook Pro, like the really high end one, the 15 inch, like you went all out, 2,700 bucks, okay? This, this is what you do, you take the rate of what the credit card charges you, and so if the rate for the credit card is, let's say it's 24% uh, interest, because that's what credit cards are, they're 24. Oh. They just um, want to steal your money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they charge you interest per month. The end is how many times they charge you interest. That's the number of times of what they call compounding. Uh, it's how many times they charge. So then you put 12 up here times how many years you're going to go. Let's say we go for one year. Like, oh, geez. Um, you went for one year, and you didn't pay your credit card. You just, like, you bought the MacBook, and you're like, I don't really have the money. I'm not going to pay it until maybe the end of the year, maybe December. Okay, what happens is that you're going to build you're going to build interest on it. Okay, so at the very end of the year, what this is going to give you this amount, this A, this is going to be the amount of money you still owe on that MacBook. It's like the extra money because you haven't paid it off yet. So what this will do is it will it'll do a financial charge and then it will put what your new total is. Okay, all right. So here's the concept. So if I if I take uh, 0.24 divided by 12, I get 0 0.02, that's 2% per month. Uh, add that to the number 1, so this is 1.02, and then you put it to the 12th power. Okay. What this is going to do, if I do this 1.02 and I put this to the 12th power, this, this is what the interest is for all the 12 months, all those 12 com uh, compounds. And what this does, is it adds the interest into your $2,700, your $2,799. Because it's doing 100% of the money plus a little bit extra 12 times over. And so this amount of money times your $2,799 is a $3,500 computer. Okay, That's the MacBook at the end of the year. And you're like, whoa, what if you I didn't buy a $3,500 MacBook. No, that's the price of a Mac Pro. Like. I, I, bought a, I bought a MacBook. Why is it $3,500? Because a credit card charges you money if you don't pay it off at the end of the month. So if you don't pay it completely off, that's when they charge you a fee. So what if you paid it in four months? Four months. Okay, so we talked about that. So what you do is you take the $2,700. So this is the easiest way to do that type of calculation, right? So you take your $2,799. You take it times 0 0.02. Okay, 0 0.02. This will give you what your, your interest is for that month. So point, that's your financial charge, 0 0.2 times 2799. That's your $55 charge at the end of one month. And okay, that's the end of one month. And so that would be a part of your new total. So you take your 2799 and you add your 5598. That's maybe this is April and this comes May. This is what the new total will be. Like May 1st, they give you a bill in the mail. So $27.99 plus your $55.98. You now owe, uh, according to May 1st, $28.54.98 for that MacBook. That's May 1st. You know, you bought in April, you didn't pay it, so they charged you $55 for not paying it. And you keep doing this. But here's the worst part with the credit card. The next month, so now that's May, June rolls around. 
they charge you the 2% on that number now. And that's the scary thing about a credit card. That's why there's a breaking point on a credit card that you can't escape. Um, where if you're not paying enough money into the credit card that it alleviates this, you'll never pay it off. So that's why people always say that they get in trouble with credit cards and they have to, they have to file bankruptcy. Um, because what happens is uh, the bank has, or, or the credit card company has figured out that the interest is building so fast because you're not paying it off that you will never be able to pay it off. And so what they do is they shut you down. They're just kind and of not very nice people. It no, like. it's, the credit card is great for a single purpose. You buy something, you pay it off at the end of the month. Because if you pay it off before the end of the month, they don't charge you anything. It's awesome. It's like it's like a free money to borrow. But if you don't pay it off, they're like, okay, we just lent you money that you didn't pay us back. We need we need a little bit extra because we have to put that money back in other people's accounts and we can't put it back yet. So we're going to charge you a little extra fee because you borrowed that money a little bit too long. That's what it is. Um, so a credit card is really smart. You buy like what I use it for is I buy gas, pay it off in the end of the month. They don't charge me an extra. Zero. Zero percent interest. Because I'm paying it off before the end of the month. How do you do that? Okay, why? Because it, um, credit cards are the fastest way to build credit. Mm -hmm. So it, it's uh, the th three things that really affect your credit score for banks. Credit cards, um, student loans, and a mortgage. Like those three things. Also, um, there's a fourth one. It's uh, hospital bills. Uh, you just said those, those three. But the, the three no, things you can basically control. No, I can't trust him. He's like, like a VA. VA. So. You just think like VA. I can't and trust him. And why does it go down? Credit scores? I think I've learned a lot. Makes no sense. When you check it. Oh, um, it, I, I understand that. Um, the concept that they always say, like when you check a credit score, like online or you check it somewhere, um, and you check it a lot, that your credit score goes down because you don't have confidence what your score is. Like, somebody that checks your score once a year, you're fine. But if you check it, like, every couple months, it means something's wrong, and it's giving a red flag to those credit card bills. What if you're doing really well paying off your credit card bills, and you want to see if it's helping you? So you check so, it a lot, but then it's hurting you. And it, you it's hurting you in the long run. So they always say what you're supposed to do, like a, like a very smart person would check it once a year. Just once. Because if you're paying off your bills, you, the credit score should go up. So what I've, what I've done it for, for me, because... Um, for me, I've definitely bought a lot of vehicles over my time. Um, I have. I just know that. Um, it's like every couple of years, I check my credit score because that's the number that I see, right? When I'm buying a car, I get my credit score back. So I always know kind of what my score is. What is your score? Sorry, it's an I'm sorry. 815. Oh, that's good. So, yeah, it's pretty, that's nice pretty score, stellar. Score. So um, 830 is the top, and I can't get to 830 because I'm not like a million. So, you could be a million. Um, but I, see, I don't miss payments though. I pay my credit card. I pay my student loans. I don't have any hospital bills because I never go to the hospital. So, don't so you better hit a desk so, right now. So. Just never. Knock on wood. So you need to knock on wood right now. What? Knock on some wood. Justin. I'm never. All right. That's not even real wood. But you got no credit scores. Kind of important, but that's why I have a credit card. So what I bought my credit card. The one credit card I have in my wallet is the Amazon card. Because I use it for this purpose. I buy stuff on Amazon or something. I pay it off at the end of the month. And the best part about an Amazon card is that when you buy something with it, they give you they give you like a benefit. Uh, Amazon. The, um, you get I think three. No, when you buy on Amazon, you get five percent cash back. So whatever I buy on Amazon, I get five percent of that cash straight back. Even though I paid you know twenty seven dollars for the item, I get five percent of that twenty seven dollars as cash back as a bonus. So I'm getting Thanks basically free money. So what I just did recently I is um, I bought stuff with my credit card, paid it off, and I've, I've saved my, my points since like the, I think the beginning of last year, just been saved because I don't buy lots of stuff on there. But I saved it up and I had a hundred bucks in, in bonus cash. So I just bought one of those Amazon tablet things to see what it's like. And it was free. I didn't pay any money for it. It was zero dollars to me. So. You should save up. And it was just Amazon one of those things. It was like it was. Million, I, I, and then you get your eight. Amazon's great score. because they can give me items that I need that on a normal daily basis. But you know, using the credit card wisely is what get, gave me those points. So I got a free object just be using a credit card smartly for it. So, but all right. But why why I bring this up? Why I'm bringing this stuff up is because what we're going into is continuously compounded problems, which is different than a credit card. Um, and we're going to talk about exponential growth and decay. So here's the formula that I'd like you to have. This is a continuous compounded problem. OK, 
Okay, and this is the problem that, um, that we had the other day that I wanted to discuss. Oh, I, think they, I think they use T. Okay. Um, this problem right here is the actual growth problem. Okay. What this is, is this represents decay and growth of objects like savings accounts or anything that's compounded continuously where it's, it's growing without any, without any, like, Push. Yeah, without any human, you know, interaction with it. So, um, like, well, what I mean, like, on a credit card, you have to wait for you have to wait for somebody to send the bill. They charge you the fee. They add it in separately. They print off the bill and they send it to you. I know that could be automated, but but the idea is con continuously is that it's happening behind the scenes with nobody actually doing stuff to it. So, like, it's a savings account. So, if you had if you had a savings account that was, you know, maybe thirty seven hundred dollars. Um, using the you know the amount of money that kind of used to earlier, and you wanted to put it in the bank account, and you knew that the interest or the the rate of growth was half a percent, and you're going to leave it in over maybe a ten year period. This is the rate of growth, half a percent. This is the time frame in years, and this A is the amount of money that it will be in the end. It's what they call the amount that's vested. It's grown over time. This is the A to the zero, it's called A naught. This is the initial amount of money that you you invested. That's the initial, it's A to the zero, it's the day zero of this object, okay? And so I put in my $3,700 and I let it sit for a while. Um, you can buy your Mac Pro with that. Sure, but over 10 years, I'm letting this vest and what, what would happen if I were just to let it sit in my savings? You could buy a couple Mac Pros. Okay. Possibly, probably not. I could probably maybe buy a mouse. <laughs> that would be good though. All right. So let's do the numbers here, right? So three thirty-seven hundred bucks. So, so thirty-seven hundred bucks. We oh, we take this times e. They are a computer. E to the point zero zero five times ten. Um, times ten, and the number that it says is that if I let this sit for ten years, it's three thousand eight hundred eighty-nine dollars. And seven seventy cents. Yeah, you're not making much of it. Yeah, not a lot. But that's a, that's considered a small savings account. Now, savings accounts they want they want you know five digits, six digits in that savings account. Well, if you have that type of money, that's the savings account grows faster. So the more money, the better the better the interest is coming out of that thing. So that's why they always think about retirement accounts, um, because the retirement accounts have a large amount of money that has been stored over years. And so that money's growing. So that's why, like, for educators, for teachers, you have um, you have IPERS, right? That's your retirement fund because IPERS is is basically what they're doing is they're taking all these teachers' salaries, taking chunks of money out of it, and investing it in one big pot in a bank account and letting it grow. So all the teachers that are investing, it's growing faster and faster. So that's why it's good to have a union and other teachers in your state that are investing into that because it, the money goes faster and you get a bigger retirement at the end of the year or the end of your you know your your profession. Okay, this is what a couple um, couple experts in uh, Silicon Valley did is that they had what they called angel investors and they took millions of dollars from each of these major corporations. Like who? Um, these are just um, um, normal people. So it was like. Um, ex so examples I can use was Kevin Rose, um, Alex Arbuck. These are people that made dig.com, like a major website. What These are websites that were big in like the early 2000s. So something I would So, do. yeah, you, um, MySpace co-founder. I've heard of um, that. Yeah. Like founders that, like some of those businesses kind of went and, you know, went and passed and stuff. But what these gentlemen did, and they were really smart, they took all their money and they put it into one savings account altogether. And they let it sit over time, and they were making a ton of money. And what they would do is every year is that they would they would start investing more, and they would take all the interest that it would build over years, like over a year, and they would split that up amongst themselves again, and that's what cash they'd get on hand. So like free cash basically, because if they could spend the interest before the end of the year, they wouldn't be charged for it for like tax purposes. So and if they invested more money they get more cash back, so they would get more people. Um, but this, this concept, what you're seeing here, is the exact concept of like a Ponzi scheme. A Ponzi scheme is uh, like a pyramid scheme where, where they, they, they collect a ton of money from a lot of people, 
And they just basically do this really fancy stuff where they just send money to people that just recently invested to trick them into investing more. And then whoever set up the thing will just leave Justin. with all the money at some point. Justin. That sounds like a great idea if it were No, illegal. definitely not. Ian was literally talking so. about that. If it period. wasn't illegal, it would be nice. Definitely not. Why not? No. Make a lot of money. No. Okay. All right. I think it's Justin. nice. Okay. Okay, questions on growth and decay. What does it do? It's just a mouse. Yes. All right, hey, we good so far? Yes. All right, so let's talk about growth and decay, right? So. One. 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 All right. I'll explain here. Okay. All right. Now. What we're going to be talking about is growth and decay. This is the formula that you had just a little bit ago. Is this going to be lower cost? This, this, this problem is how bacteria population grows, other things like that where it has half-life and stuff. So let's say you had a population of people. Okay. Let's say we had a population of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15 people in this room, initial 15 people with uh, Josie included, okay? And I want to know what the growth rate is over a time One. period. One. Over a time period where, where the idea is that maybe I want to know when, when will the class actually double to 30, okay? And the idea is that I'm going to give it, you know, in terms of time, I can put any terms of time that I want into this problem. Maybe I want to go for 20 minutes. I'm going to go for 20 minutes. So what this will do is this will give me the growth of people over a 20 minute period. So what you can do with this problem is we can solve it using the stuff we just did in the homework. So over a 20 minute period, we can actually figure out what the growth rate is of my class. So, so for 15, we divide the 15 over. So we're going to try to double the class. One. Three. Three. Four. Okay. All right. So, so we're gonna take the we're gonna take the log of both sides. So we take the log rhythm, or actually, let's take the natural log of both sides. Natural log of two. Natural log of e to the twenty k. We drop the twenty k out front because you can drop powers out front of the logarithm. Twenty k natural log e. And this is natural log 2. The natural log e is 1. And then you can divide by 20. And what this will give me is it will give me the growth rate of what's occurring right now in this classroom. Okay. And this, what this is over a 20-minute period is we're looking at what the growth rate is of what Justin is doing right now. Okay? Okay. All right. And what this number is, let's actually look at this number. Again, we're doubling the population. Sorry. So, two, so two, uh, or actually, natural log of two, I should say. One, natural one, log one. of two. Uh, so, natural log of two divided by 20. And the idea here is, this is my growth rate. This is a 3% growth. Six. Seven. Eight. Okay. You got it wrong yet? Yeah. Okay. All right, Justin, you want to explain what we're doing Justin, today? Justin, you didn't get it yourself. Yeah, that's fine. All right, Justin, what were we doing today? We were growing things. Yeah. Exponential. What, were, what, what was my example I gave you out in the hall? I was infecting people because I was a zombie. Okay. It's like Walking Dead style. <laughs> yeah. It took, it took him. Hey, what time did you actually start? I don't know. Like two minutes ago? <laughs> what? Like two minutes ago? Yeah, maybe two minutes. I told him to move every 30 seconds and in fact double the amount of people every time. So when he was counting, he did one, then he did two, then he did four, then he did eight, and then he finished yeah. out with the rest of the people. It took him two minutes and infected this whole entire class period. Okay? That concept is a growth. He doubled the class basically by infecting everybody. And it took him not 20 minutes, it took him like two minutes. So his growth rate was significantly faster than mine. Okay, 
Okay, this is over a 20 minute period if he actually were to slow down. I told him every 30 seconds we can get it done quick. Okay, this is the concept that the movie Walking Dead, to me, had the greatest thing that they had going for it, but they never really explored it. That the growth rate of like the zombie outbreak was the coolest concept of that show because it was so incredibly fast. They hinted at it at certain moments. I think the the secondary show they had, which was called um, Fear the Walking, Fear the Walking or Dead or something like that, where they kind of talked about the actual outbreak and when the day started and where, where it went. Like, if this was a class of 15 people and it took like a minute or two, over an entire population of the United States to infect like everybody, 100% of the population, it would have taken like a month maybe. So like The Walking Dead, like when they actually show that concept of like society breaking down, it was, the time span is actually significantly faster. So when you think of like the seasons as like a year, it was more like a couple months. And it can get to that point, which I think was one of the coolest concepts that the show said. And that's why they actually did a pretty good job in the beginning of saying like, okay, it's only been a couple months and then they went to the next season. They talked about, okay, what's happened over the past couple weeks? And they said, okay, these are the characters and stuff, and you know, they did a pretty good job. But then they kind of lost track of that because it would it would have started speeding up. And the next season came around, they're like, well, this has been three years later, and everyone's changed, and they're all bigger, and they're all older, and stuff. And it's like it would have been like weeks later, not years later. Yesterday. Okay. Yeah, it would have been, it would have been like literally, it would have been like yesterday, fifty thousand zombies were outside. <laughs> the next day is a hundred thousand because they they would infect at that rate. They double. You know, every couple seconds. But also well, in The Walking Dead, they're bitten. That's how they're. Yeah, yeah. So, really like and it. and you have to consider that the the space of the the world is way better than my classroom is, right? This is yeah, talking about like if these were individual states. This off. took a while. Okay. Yes. So that kind of a cool concept. You guys got to experience that. Uh, sorry, Josie, you were out in the room at the time, but, but um, it was one of those things. Like you saw how fast it went. You guys were still kind of clueless. That's the coolest part about that show is that that's kind of what the first couple seasons were. No one knew what was going on. That that concept of the zombie outbreak. Like, did anyone really believe it? Like, even those first couple episodes, they talked about you know some of the people were like, eh, it's not really happening. It's just you know it's a TV show. Or it's a radio thing. But then they actually started to see like society changing and starting to see like cities go down. And that was kind of the, the cool part of the show. You guys got to experience that for like a minute and hear like confusion. Like, what is Justin doing? He's about to get kicked out of here for interrupting class. I asked him to do it on purpose because it was weird, right? Watching him walk around counting and throwing paper down on people's desks for no random reason. Okay? Let alone biting people. I didn't ask him to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. All right. But, kind of a cool concept. All right. All right. Um, page 433, due Monday. Applications for student counselor due Monday if you want to apply. Uh, that's pretty much about it. That's where I'm going to end today. So.